So good morning. My name is Danny Fitzgerald. I'm the Regional Director for the San Diego and Imperial Small Business Development Center Network. And we have today our friends from Small Business Majority, uh, specifically Latavia Pineda, who's going to be able to talk a little bit about the California Rebuilding Fund. Again, at the Small Business Development Center, we're here to be able to assist you. We've been doing a ton of work, obviously, throughout the pandemic. And now that we're starting to come out, there still is a lot of recovery work. And this is one of the, one of the excellent loan funds that's out there uh, for low interest loans for an opportunity for folks to be able to uh, to certainly be able to um, you know, get access to capital they need, the working capital uh, to, to kind of help their business reopen or reinvigorate itself as things go through. At the SPDC, we're here to kind of help you navigate uh, this fund as well as any other programs, as well as traditional capital, starting your business and so forth that's out there. And you certainly are able to reach us and I'll put our website again in the chat box. But, uh, but again, my name is Danny Fitzgerald. And uh, really excited to be able to have Latavia on today to, to be able to talk about the California Rebuilding Fund. So Latavia, it's all on to you. Thank you so much, Danny, and thanks for having us today. Really excited to be here with you all to talk a little bit about the California Rebuilding Fund. Like Danny said, this is a low interest loan product available to those businesses in California who have been negatively impacted by the pandemic. Just a quick introduction. My name is Latavia Pineda. I am the Southern California Outreach Manager for Small Business Majority. So I work with all of our great business owners throughout the state of California, specifically in Southern California. Um, if you're not familiar with Small Business Majority yet, we are a national education and advocacy nonprofit that focuses on empowering America's small business owners and the self-employed to ensure that you have the tools and knowledge that you need to contribute to our thriving and inclusive economy. We have a network of more than 85,000 businesses who are able to access all of our tools and resources completely for free. Um, we have offices across the nation. We have eight different offices and we're able to serve business owners uh, from a wide range of backgrounds. And like I mentioned, we do do advocacy and education. And on the advocacy side of things, that means providing policymakers with the research that we conduct to make sure that they are making policies that benefit you all. Uh, we also are constantly in communication with media outlets who are looking to speak with small business owners to make sure that we are really uplifting that true voice of America's small business owners. Lastly, we do lots in the, in the realm of education and resources, um, specifically in the issue areas of access to capital, entrepreneurship, healthcare, workplace benefits, and taxes. Um, on the education and resources side, we do a great amount of webinars and seminars, as well as all of our work on social media um, to make sure that you all are able to stay connected with us. And you can find all of our educational resources on venturize.org, which I'll show you guys at the end of today's webinar. Getting started with the meat of today's conversation about the California Rebuilding Fund. The California Rebuilding Fund is a loan program to support California small businesses, especially those located in um, economically disadvantaged and historically underbanked areas of the state. The loans are flexible, transparent, and are designed to help businesses access capital and advisory services that they need to get through these challenging economic times. So a little bit of context for why this program exists. So prior to the pandemic, we did a, uh, a poll that showed us that 90% of small businesses said that the availability of credit was a problem to them. Now, this was before the severe economic impacts of this pandemic. Um, and we know that this is a problem because the availability of capital is crucial for small businesses to start up, survive, and grow. So without capital, these three things become very challenging and if not impossible for business owners. We also know that only 18% of small businesses ever access a bank loan. So this is a very small percentage of folks who are able to go into a bank, apply for a loan, go through the underwriting process, and uh, get approved for a, a loan through a bank. And oftentimes when we think about lending, the first thing that comes to mind are banks. Um, but as we can see, small businesses are not able to access bank loans at a rate that would be desirable. 
Um, and we also know that post-recession, small businesses struggle uh, to access capital even uh, in greater amounts. So we're definitely seeing a great demand, a great need for products like the California Rebuilding Fund that offer low cost, low interest loans to small businesses who just need that working capital uh, to make it through these tough times, to maybe help with the pivot, to help with the, the readjustments for kind of um, this, this new time that we're in. So who created this program? Uh, this was kind of the um, a program that was able to become reality thanks to the CASE Task Force, which stands for the California Association for Small Enterprises. And this is a small group of volunteers from a variety of backgrounds, including legal, nonprofit, and philanthropy. Um, it, this group was established to address the lending disparities experienced by small business owners, often micro businesses, business owners of color, women and marginalized and rural business owners. Uh, they were able to come up with this great uh, program, the California Rebuilding Fund, um, uh, in partnership with the state's infrastructure bank or the iBank. Uh, they were able to raise the capital to allow community lenders like CDFIs to lend more capital. Now you may be asking Latavia, what is a community lender? A community lender can include um, community development financial institutions that help small businesses who are typically left out of the traditional banking system. So a little bit more about CDFIs. CDFIs offer loans usually less than $250,000 to entrepreneurs who are typically ineligible for traditional bank loans, um, and they may be used for a variety of business purposes, including that working capital that we know is crucial um, for the startup uh, growth and survival of businesses. CDFIs are dedicated to responsible, affordable lending to underserved entrepreneurs and low-income communities. They offer revolving loan funds through private and government funding. So if you're wondering where they get their money from, that is where it comes from. They often provide in-depth support that includes mentoring and technical assistance, which most banks will not be able to offer. Many CDFIs offer microloan pro programs of loans less than $50,000, which most banks are not able to make because they are not profitable enough or not desirable enough to, uh, to the bank. Very important to note that CDFIs are the primary institution that lend to small business owners through the California Rebuilding Fund. So before we get started um, really looking at this program in depth, um, I want to pose a few questions to you all to consider. Uh, prior to even beginning to think about borrowing money. The first is what do you need the money for? Lenders want to know exactly how you're planning on spending that capital that they're loaning you. Um, so, you know, sometimes folks get a little shy when it comes to talking about what their plans are for their businesses, how they're planning on spending money, um, but it's important that you're able to clearly articulate uh, what you need the money for. How much money do you need? Sometimes folks will say, oh, I don't know, about maybe $10,000, or uh, they'll say however much they'll approve me for. Um, but it's best to have a clear number in mind prior to going into the situation of borrowing to make sure that you're not over borrowing or under borrowing. An example I always give is I work with a business owner when I first started at Small Business Majority who told me that she wanted to buy a printer for her sign making company um, because she had previously been outsourcing these types of projects and she wanted to be able to maximize her, her margins and her revenue by making those products in-house. Um, and so she told me that this printer would cost her $20,000 and she had already saved 5,000. So she was looking for a loan of about 15,000 which seemed great to me, but then the more we got to talking, I realized that she would need unique and special materials for this printer, which she didn't have. And those would cost her about $5,000 more. So the total cost of this endeavor would be $25,000 and she had 5,000 saved, meaning that she needed a loan for $20,000 and not $15,000 like she thought. So it was very important that we were able to make that adjustment because otherwise she would have ended up with a printer and no materials for her printer. Um, next question is, how long will it take you to pay it back? How long is this debt going to be on your books? Um, some loan terms are three years, some are five years, some are 30 years. So it's important to know how long you're going to be paying off this debt. 
Next question you should be asking is what is the current financial shape of your business? As we know, a lot of you have probably taken on some unexpected debt over the last year and a half. And so it's important to think about what is your ability to repay that long term um, instead of just trying to put a band aid on the situation with additional debt. Um, how long have you been in business? This is a very important question that oftentimes um, folks will gloss over. Uh, they'll put an approximate date for when they started, but it's really important to know when you really formalize your business because it's possible that maybe you've been selling notebooks um, out of your customized notebooks uh, from your home for you know seven years, but you really only formalized five years ago. Uh, so it's important to have a good uh, idea of when you formalized it, what is on paper, what's on your business license, what's on your articles of incorporation, um, all of that stuff is very important. I always make the joke that my dad can't remember his birthday, he definitely can't remember when he started a business, um, so it's important to have that number um, clearly in your mind. Next up is how much collateral, if any, do you have to put up for the loan? Now, the great thing about CDFIs is they oftentimes let you be pretty creative with what you're putting up as capital, whether or what you're putting up as collateral, whether that's a car, your home, um, jewelry. I've heard of sports memorabilia being used as collateral for CDFI loans. Um, you can also, of course, use inventory, cash, furniture and fixtures. Um, so all of those are options and we'll get into that a little bit more as well during this presentation. Next question you should be asking is how quickly do you need the money? Because if your answer is tomorrow, you need money tomorrow, that's going to greatly change your options. It's going to greatly reduce your options. Um, so it's important to have, uh, to kind of be honest with yourself about when you need that funding. If you have the time to wait and you're really able to be selective and really pick the exact perfect product for you that's low interest, um, that has all of these great perks, that's awesome. But if you know that you're in more of a pinch, um, that will really reduce your options. So it's important to know that before you go into an underwriting process, it's maybe going to take three months, but really you need the money in a month. And lastly, are you looking for debt or equity financing? Debt being money that you repay typically at interest and equity being stake in your company. Now to get on to the meat of the California Rebuilding Fund. This is a low interest loan made at 4.25% by those community development financial institutions or CDFIs. The maximum loan amount for this program is $100,000 or up to 100% of average monthly revenues for a three month period prior to COVID-19. The loan term is 60 months, so that's five years. You will be paying interest only for the first 12 months with no prepayment penalties. So um, this is kind of the overview of kind of what this um, loan product looks like. Very appealing terms. It's probably going to be um, after grants and the economic injury disaster loan. It's going to be the most affordable product on the market in the state of California. So if you're looking for that capital, if you're looking for a loan, this is one that we highly encourage you to consider if you meet the eligibility criteria. Now here is the borrower eligibility. First off, and bear with me because I'm going to be, uh, this is kind of a dense material, but um, very important to know. I always um, feel really sad for business owners when they spend the time to apply for a product, they get their hopes up only to find out that they don't meet the basic eligibility criteria. So it's always very important to review that prior to going into any application process. So the first piece of borrower eligibility includes that the business must have employed 50 or fewer full-time equivalent employees prior to March 2020. Please note that this does include any affiliates, including businesses with shared ownership. Next, the business must have had gross revenues of less than $2.5 million in 2019. The business must have suffered a direct economic hardship as a result of COVID-19, which has materially impacted operations as evidenced by at least a significant reduction in revenues since January, 2020. The business must have returned to or sustained for at least a one month period, at least 30% of pre-COVID revenues relative to a similar period in 2019. This is the piece of eligibility criteria that tends to get folks the most for this program. And basically what it means is that for at least one month um, of 
2020, for example, or 2021, you must have sustained or returned to 30% of your pre-COVID revenues for that same month in 2019. So let's say that you did um, $10,000 in revenues in um, January 2019. So then you must have done um, $3,000 in January of 2020, for example. Um, next up, the business must have demonstrated positive net income in 2019, meaning that you must have been profitable in 2019 and not reported um, more losses than you did uh, revenue. The business must have been in operation since at least June 30th, 2019 and be operating at the time of application. So sometimes what we'll hear is, you know, like I, I did shut down my business. Um, I kept my business license, but I shut it down in 2018. Now I'm thinking of reopening it. Can I apply for this product? Unfortunately, the answer would be no, um, because you would have to um, uh, have been shut down as a result of the pandemic. Next, the main office or headquarters of the business must be in California, and the loan must be used to support only a business's California operations. Hence the California Rebuilding Fund name, gotta be in California. Some documentation that you may need. Now today we'll be going through the pre-application for, for this product. Um, and at the time of submitting your pre-application, you don't have to submit any paperwork, but in subsequent steps, you may have to provide all of or some of these documents. First being the schedule of ownership, which includes the personal information and percentage of ownership for all owners with more than 20% ownership of the business. You may also, you probably will have to present an executed attestation certificate, which will be given to you by the lender for you to sign. Um, next would be bank statements or other proof of revenue, just to show that you um, are a business that is um, operating and has um, funds coming in. Um, next would be your 2019 federal tax documentation. So this would be your 2019 tax returns. Um, a personal guarantee, if applicable, not all of the lenders in this program are going to be asking for a guarantee, but some of them probably will be. Um, evidence of the organization's legal formation. This would include um, your um, articles of incorporation, your business registration, um, et cetera. Now there are some ineligible industries for this program. This includes businesses that are not, um, this includes firms engaged in activities that are prohibited at the federal level or applicable law in the jurisdiction where the business is located or conducted. Businesses engaged in speculative activities that develop profits from fluctuations in price rather than through normal course of trade. Facilities primarily used for gambling or other, or to facilitate gambling and firms engaged in primarily lobbying activities. This is pretty standard for most programs like this, wherein these types of industries would not be eligible to apply for the California Rebuilding Fund. So now you're saying, okay, well, Tavia, you've given us a lot of information about this loan program. How do we actually find more information? How do I apply? Uh, it's an excellent question. And what you'll do is go to caloanfund.org. And there you'll be able to see a web page that looks similar to what is on the left hand side of your screen, where there'll be an overview, loan terms, business requirements, frequently asked questions, resources, and your pre application. Prior to clicking on that pre application, I do encourage you to do research and look at the other tabs on this website, such as the business requirements and the frequently asked questions. Um, as part of the pre-application, you will be asked to answer a short set of questions about your business. Um, and um, you will also be able to receive high touch, hands-on support that will ensure that the business is able to navigate the process. Um, and that would be provided by a small business development center or a women's business center, for example, similar to uh, the work that, um, that Danny and all of his uh, great colleagues are doing at the um, San Diego and Imperial SBDC. All right, so getting on to some of those questions that are in the pre-application, we're gonna go through the whole thing today. I'm going to explain each question, so feel free to take notes. Um, but if you're not able to take notes, don't worry. Um, we're always available to assist. Um, the first question is, 
how much do you want to borrow? And then as you can see, there are some small letters and I encourage you to read the small letters for every question on this pre-application. Um, here it says, loans are available to you in the amount of either uh, $100,000 or up to 100% of the business's average monthly revenues for any three months prior to the COVID-19 pandemic outbreak, whichever is less. Please do not request more than $100,000. Requesting more than $100,000 will mean that you are not able to be matched with the lender at the end of this process. Um, and additionally, if you're having trouble calculating um, that amount, there is under um, the Frequently Asked Questions tab right over here, um, a, a calculation to help you figure that out. So in this case, for my, for my sample application, I went ahead and I put that I'm requesting $65,000. Next up, they're asking, how do you plan to use this loan? And as you can see in the small letters that I put a red box around, it says, please select working capital. So I went ahead and I selected working capital. Next up is, when do you need financing by? Please let us know the urgency of your request. So your options become today, in two weeks, within one to two months, and I'm researching. Um, this is important because this is not a product that's going to have the fastest turnaround ever. So that is important to keep in mind. For my application, I went ahead and I put in the next two weeks. Tell us a little bit more about your business. You need to have been in business since June 30th, 2019 to be eligible as a reminder. I went ahead and I filled out that I was an LLC, that I was in the retail industry and that I had been in business for between two to three years. Next question is where is your business located? Uh, as a reminder, the main office or headquarters for your business must be in California to be eligible. The loan must be used to support only a business's California operations. So here you're gonna wanna go ahead and put that California address and it's going to be ideally what's on your tax return. I went ahead and I put our small business majority address. Next up is how should we reach you? The online application should be completed and submitted by the owner of the business with the largest ownership interest. Any owner with more than 20% ownership will be required to attest to the information. So basically here, what you're gonna to wanna to do is put down the contact information for that owner with the largest share. So it's going to be first name, last name, email, phone number, uh, how would you like to be contacted and what time of day do you prefer? If you know that you're more available in the morning, if you know that you're more available in the afternoon once the kids have gone to school, maybe in the evening once you've come home from the store, etc. Uh, just go ahead and feel free to put that down appropriately. What was your total revenue last year and last year being 2019? Um, applicants must have realized gross annual revenue less than $2.5 million in 2019. I went ahead and I put that my 2019 revenues were between $100,000 and $250,000. And the next question is, did you earn a profit last year? It's a yes or no question. And as a reminder, one of the eligibility criteria for this program is that you must have been profitable in 2019. So I went ahead and I put yes. <laughs> For this, uh, for this question. Um, next question is, what was your annual net profit last year? Last year being 2019. Applicants must demonstrate positive 2019 income, uh, not including depreciation and amortization expenses. Um, so what you're going to go ahead there is put your 2019 net profit. I went ahead and I put $60,000 net profit. Um, now they're asking questions about the size of our business. How many employees do we have and do we have any prior bankruptcies? Um, for my application, I went ahead and I put that I have three full-time employees and a reminder that full-time employees will include um, any partial or um, any partial owners. And next there's a question about bankruptcies. Now prior bankruptcies won't necessarily disqualify you from this program. Um, however, they do matter because um, the lender will need to know the state and the status of that bankruptcy, the current status of that bankruptcy. And if it has been um, resolved, um, they will need to have some documentation just to demonstrate that this um, bankruptcy has been resolved. Next question is, do you have collateral to support the loan? I'm going to read all of the different options that they provide so you can get a sense for what the different, um, what the different types of collateral include. 
So that's commercial real estate, residential real estate, inventory, accounts receivable, cash, investment accounts, new equipment and machinery, furniture and fixtures, vehicles, used equipment and machinery, vacant land, leasehold improvements, other and none. Now, of course, you're welcome to put none. You can also put other. In the case of my little retail establishment, I went ahead and I put that I had inventory, cash, furniture and fixtures, and vehicles. I'm just going to go ahead and mute that person. Perfect. Um, how much revenue do you expect to make this year, 2021? Um, less than $100,000, between $100,000 and $250,000, and so on. For my application, I went ahead and I put less than $100,000. Do you have a business plan? A complete business plan will include financial projections, a market analysis, an overview of your business. It is not required to have a business plan to receive the California Rebuilding Fund loan. Um, if you don't have a business plan, of course, we encourage everyone to work with the Small Business Development Center to create one. However, it is not totally necessary. For my application, I went ahead and put no to show you that it won't affect your application or your pre-application negatively. Now there's a question about demographics. So is your business owned by women, people of color, veterans, and or LGBTQ identifying people? Um, I went ahead and I put yes. And then um, this menu popped up with all of the different options. That includes women, veterans, LGBTQ, Black and African American, Asian, Latinx, Native American, Alaska Native, Native Hawaiian, Pacific Islander, mixed race, and other. I went ahead and I put woman and Latinx. Um, now this is just so that um, the program can have a sense of who they are serving. Um, these answers will not affect your eligibility for the program. Personal credit score. Uh, there is no minimum credit score required under this program. Each community lender has set its own credit score for the loan applications it reviews. I went ahead and I put 640 to 659. And you, of course, are welcome to, uh, to put whatever applies to you. Important to note that there is no credit pull at the time of submitting this pre-application. However, if you are matched with the lender and proceed to go through with the application process, you will have to uh, have your credit checked. All right, that was the final question for this application. And as you can see, I was matched with a great lender in our community known as Opportunity Fund. Um, and then I really wanna bring your attention to the left-hand side, uh, this gray box. As you can see, it shows me my match factors and it rates them on a color scale of green, yellow, and red. Um, for me, my time in business of two to three years was green, good. My personal credit score was yellow, okay. Uh, my last, my income from last year uh, was good. No prior bankruptcies, great. Uh, no business plan was red, but it didn't affect me negatively. Collateral green and, is, and having a profitable business was also green very important that this is not the last step. Getting here is not, that does not mean that you are done. You still have to continue to click connect in order to be connected with your lender and proceed in the application process. The subsequent screen will look like this. And here um, you will receive the information from your community lender with their contact information, website, phone number, address, et cetera some information about the loan that you have just uh, submitted a pre-application for. Um, everyone's will look different depending on which lender they are matched with. So that's very important to keep in mind. Um, so I would encourage you to, you know, take a picture, jot it down. It's just something to uh, make sure that you don't lose this information because you're also going to be looking for communications from this institution. So in my case, I would be looking for emails from Opportunity Fund. In your case, it may be um, Accessity um, or another lender in your area. So what if I don't qualify? You know, not everyone is going to qualify for this loan, either because your business wasn't profitable or because um, potentially of any other number of reasons, uh, maybe industry, for example. Um, so ineligible applicants will be matched with a technical assistance provider, either a small business development center, a women's business center, or a SCORE mentor to help them get 
loan ready or to find another affordable loan product that is better suited to their business. So I know, for example, um, Working Solutions, which is a lender that's working with this program, uh, you may not be able to qualify for the California Rebuilding Fund at that 4.25% interest, but maybe you can qualify for their, uh, for their loan that's at 5% interest. So just a little bit higher, um, but with different eligibility criteria. So don't be discouraged if you're not able to get a match. We would encourage you to connect with those um, technical assistance providers that pop up at the end of the process to connect with them and learn about your other options. And of course, important to note that not all applicants will be eligible for this loan product. All right, that is the bulk of the information I have about the California Rebuilding Fund. I'm going to take a quick second to pause and um, we will go ahead and look at the website together. So then here we can see caloanfund.org. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And once I have typed in caloanfund.org, I will be redirected to a different uh, website, but that is totally okay. This is just a very long URL that we don't give folks because it would be too difficult to type. Um, but as you can see here, we have the overview, the loan terms, business requirements, frequently asked questions, resources, and the pre-application, which is what we just went through. I would like to show you some of the frequently asked questions. We have information about the very basics of the program. Uh, what kinds of businesses does this help? Uh, what happens if I complete this online pre-application? What if I need help completing my small business loan application? Um, Etc. How much money can I borrow is one that I really want to flag for you all. Because here we have the exact equation for how to calculate how much you're going to be asking for from this program. So the maximum available loan amount is $100,000 or up to your business's average monthly revenues for three month period prior to COVID-19. Whichever is less, the maximum loan amount available under this program is $100,000, of course. An example of how your maximum loan is calculated to determine your business's average monthly revenues for an estimated potential loan size, the lender may use the following. September, October, November, $10,000, $15,000, $20, $20,000. Based on the above referenced example, the average revenues for this period is $15,000. So three months of average revenue would be $45,000 in this example. The maximum loan amount would be $45,000. So take those three months average revenue, divide by three, multiply by three. Um, additionally, I want to show you all our website, VentureRise.org, where you can find information about other programs and other products. Uh, we have this COVID-19 resources for small business portal where you can find loans and grants, information about business resiliency and supporting your employees. Under the loans and grants tab, you can click browse now, scroll down and select your state. We'll put California. And then a range of options come up. The first being the California Rebuilding Fund, which we just which we just discussed, the Founders First Job Creators Quest Grant for those of you in um, San Bernardino and Riverside and possibly Imperial, or it's Orange, apologies. So it's San Bernardino, Riverside and Orange County. The Small Business Debt Relief Grant Program in San Francisco, uh, the Oakland Black, Black Business Fund, et cetera. So there's a range of options on there um, of emergency capital that you may qualify for. I'm going to take us back to our homepage to show you how to um, locate um, some information about loans and assistance. So if you're looking for assistance, maybe you need a little bit of help completing your pre-application for the California Rebuilding Fund, we'll go to find assistance. Go ahead and type in our zip code here. And then we can see this different range of service providers that pop up. So we see incubators and accelerators, lenders, retirement providers, business planning and strategy, financial tools and management, mentoring and networking, contracting opportunities, et cetera. So here I see the Los Angeles Women's Business Center offers business planning and strategy, financial capacity and management, legal licensing and permitting, marketing and research, mentoring and networking. I can see SoCal CDC is a lender. 
I can see that the new Women's Business Center is an option. Managed Career Solutions has business planning and strategy, financial capacity and management, legal licensing and permitting, marketing and research, and they're also a lender. So maybe I've gone through a few of these, done some research, and I decide I really want to work with the Los Angeles Women's Business Center. Looks like they'll be able to help me apply for this California Rebuilding Fund, and then I'll be able to get in contact with them. Another option, if you're not able to um, be qualified for the California Rebuilding Fund, is to apply um, through another CDFI for a different loan product. And what you'll do in this case, what you can do, you don't have to necessarily do this, but you can select the state of California, find a loan, click Submit, and this will take you to our Match Finder portal where you'll fill out a questionnaire, get matched with lenders, and assess your options. So it kind of cuts out some of that research time for you all. So I hope that's helpful. Um, I'll go ahead and share a few more resources with you in just a moment. Um, just always love to flag that um, predatory lending does uh, is on the rise, especially during instances of economic hardship. Um, so when those banks pull back funding a little bit and they're less willing to make those loans to small businesses, alternative lenders um, have stepped in and in some instances done a good job at filling that void. Um, however, sometimes they offer high cost and short term um, online funding options, um, which can be um, harmful to businesses if the interest rate is not affordable. Um, because this is a largely unregulated space, um, there has been an increase in predatory small business lending practices. So please be careful and mindful. Um, that's why we encourage folks to use VentureRise.org to um, be able to refer to a group of vetted and trusted lenders. Additionally, if you're looking for information about uh, understanding your credit, I always like to leave folks with some information about the five C's of credit to determine your credit worthiness. The first is character, which includes credit history, including repaying debts on time. Cash flow is next, whether you have revenue to repay the loan. Capital, how much of your own money do you have invested in your business? Collateral, property, or, assess, or assets that can be pledged as security conditions, which include outside factors such as industry, and these are the way that lenders will determine your credit worthiness. And if you're looking for more information about your business credit and your personal credit, you can go to nav.com forward slash SBM. Um, this is one of the best tools out there for checking your um, business credit and finding out more um, about um, improving your business credit. So I highly encourage you to check it out. Um, so I guess your homework for today is to use the resource map and to check out nav.com forward slash SBM. I already talked about Match Finder, but this is a great tool if you're looking to cut out some of that research time when it comes to looking for different loan products. Again, our resource map is a great tool if you're looking to get a sense for what assistance is available in your area. We went over our COVID-19 loans and grants portal where we have information about loans such as the California Rebuilding Fund and different local grants that are available. And now we have some time for Q&A. Um, I think there is some stuff in the chat. Let's see. So sole proprietorships will be able to apply for this loan. I see that question from Angie. Can a business on sole proprietorship be able to apply for this loan? I'm the only employee. Yes, you are one full-time employee. Perfect. Personal collateral or business owned collateral? Beth, that's a great question. And I think it will depend on the CDFI and what they're looking for. Um, usually it's going to be personal collateral. Personal collateral is the, the most frequent way that collateral is presented in these options. So even if you are, for example, an LLC, you may be asked to put up personal collateral. Um, just kind of the way that that works. When is the start of the application? You could apply today if you wanted to. This program has been open for a few months now. And you can also feel free to take yourself off mute if you have a question. 501c3 nonprofits are not eligible because you must have been able to demonstrate profits in 2019. It's one of the eligibility criteria. So for that reason, nonprofits don't meet the eligibility criteria, unfortunately. Thanks for that question, Matt. 
we get that one pretty often. All right, I will go ahead and put up my contact information for you all. And if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to me by phone or email. Um, and of course, Danny and his great team are always available to help you all with um, all of your technical assistance needs. So if a small business owner can apply now, how soon can they process the loan application? That all depends on the lender, um, but the sooner you apply and the sooner you respond to those communications that you're getting, um, the faster you will go through the process. That's what's really important here is that submitting your pre-application is not the end of the process. There are going to be subsequent steps with your lender that you're going to have to go through. So it's very important to make sure that you're not um, overlooking um, those emails that you're getting, maybe those phone calls reminding you to submit some additional documentation. So the sooner that you're able to follow up, the sooner you're going to be able to get approved. Yes, the business must have been in business since at least June 30th, 2019. And new businesses, what I would encourage you to do is to get in contact with your local technical assistance provider, whether that's a small business development center or a women's business center, and talk through some of your other options as a new business. Uh, many CDFIs do offer um, early stage capital uh, to, to newer businesses. So this wouldn't be the right program for you, but there are other options and our amazing technical assistance providers in the state of California can help you with that process. All right, I don't see any other questions. Um, I'll go ahead and hang out for a few more minutes, but thank you all. Uh, so much for attending today, and um, I hope that you had a safe weekend, and I hope that the rest of the week is pleasant. Uh, thank you so much again, Danny, for having me, um, and it was, as always, lovely to be here. Thank you very much, Latavia. It's been, uh, been great having you. Appreciate you answering the questions, and again, there's a lot of different resources that are still out there, um, you know, and certainly she shows at least that is. I did put the information in chat for referencing and finding the, uh, the Small Business Development Center. So uh, if there are any other questions, we'll go ahead and wrap up and I will be sending out a recording to everybody as well. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you.